I have Scorpio Navamsha and uh, so and so has Aquarius Navamsha. Is my marriage doomed? Because I heard somewhere in YouTube that if you have Scorpio or Aquarius Navamsha, Lagna, which means your D9 chart, your Navamsha, your D9, if it has the number 11 or the number 8 in the ascendant in the first house, then it means your marriage is doomed, right? This is what we will see always in the internet when we uh, discuss about Navamsha. But uh, let's discuss, is it true? Uh, and if yes, uh, is it true for everybody, right? So, see, first of all, whenever we make uh, any generic video on any ascendant, sun sign, moon sign, we always have to give a disclaimer, always, that this will depend on your individual chart. But if there are certain other combinations, then the probability is higher. So, for example, like in medical science, you know, they say that, okay, if you have this problem, then, uh, I mean, if you have this symptom, then you might have that problem. Or the other way around but if you have three or more four symptoms then there is a very strong indication that th there might be one particular disease which is causing all the three or four four things right but just if you have one uh, symptom it doesn't mean that necessarily you have one particular disease okay you may have more than uh, one causes also and one symptom may be uh, caused by more than one disease or one disease can cause more than one symptoms also. So uh, astrology is very similar because see, this is why uh, people, they lose faith in astrology and in astrologers. When we say that a particular ascendant is like this or, you know, this particular ascendant has marriage doomed because if you see... Uh, around 7 billion people in this world. Imagine there are, you know, 6 billion people and you divide by 12 ascendants. So then what happens? It's like half a billion people. So if you take Aquarius and Scorpio Lagna, 2, then 2 by 12, it's 1 by 6. So it's almost more than a billion people. So now, does it mean that 1 billion people, they're going to have terrible marriages? Now, if you say 1 billion, then the question is, does it mean that half the billion among the 1 million will marry each other, the other half? So then half of the million has to be men, the other half has, has to be women. Or the 1 billion will marry another billion and then for 2 billion, it's screwed up. So 2 billion means one third of the world population. So does it mean that one third of the world population, you know, that they are going to have terrible marriages, you know, terrible relationships? Well, do you think that's realistic? Do, do you think that can be possible? Do you think there will be any parameter by which you can make such vague, nonsensical arguments? Do you think so? Do you think then astrology will be known as science? Well, that's the problem. All the videos in YouTube, you know, they are focused on sun sign, moon sign, very generic videos. Okay, this, this lagna, this will happen, that will happen. Now, I also have a playlist on secrets of ascendance, you know, secrets of Aries lagna, Taurus lagna, Gemini lagna. But in that, I have given very clear disclaimers that please do not take this as 100%. Just because you are a Taurus lagna, it doesn't mean you will always hog on food. It doesn't mean that. Of course, the probability is higher, provided other conditions support. But that doesn't mean you'll always be hogging on food 24 hours. Now, you may be one of them who does it, but it's not necessary. Okay. So similarly, if you are Gemini Lagna, does it mean you'll always be talkative? Well, not necessarily. You could be, but it depends, right? But the probability is higher if there are other factors also which are saying the same thing. And especially if planets like Sun, Moon and the Lagna Lord, they are saying the same thing, then the probability increases that you may have those characteristics more. 
compared to other people within the same ascendant. Okay? So therefore, if you have Scorpio or Aquarius, now first of all, let's uh, let's identify why do they say uh, that uh, Scorpio or Aquarius lagna in the Navamsha. Uh, it's terrible that you know life is finished or your I mean your married life is finished. Why do they say this? Because <clears throat> there are many reasons, but one of the reasons is you know Scorpio is co-ordered by Ketu and um, Aquarius is considered to be co-ordered by Rahu, and then they're not very great planets to rule, right? Um any ascendant so and any ascendant of the divisional chart is like you know the first house that's what is the ascendant so it's like saying if the first house is gone then the whole chart is gone so then somebody may say oh i have gemini lagna in d1 i have scorpio lagna in d9 and uh aquarius lagna in d10 so does it mean my career and marriage both are ruined well <laughs> Now, do you think these things are possible? Well, absolutely not. But there are, there can be a few percentage of people for whom this might work. Now, who could be these people? Now, for, for example, if you have a Scorpio or Aquarius, okay, in your Navamsha Lagna, but in your Lagna chart, your 7th Lord, your 2nd Lord, and 11th Lord, and Venus. Four of them. All four are very terribly placed. Not one or two of them. All the four. They are like very badly afflicted or debilitated or in enemy sign or in Dustana houses. They are in terrible position. 2nd you know, Lord is in debility. 7th Lord is afflicted by two or more malefics. 11th um, Lord is in 6th, 8th, or 12th. And Venus is also screwed up big time. Then if you have uh, Navam Shalagna, Scorpio or Aquarius, then that can be trouble. But how many people will you find who has, you know, the second Lord, seventh Lord, eleventh Lord of the Lagna chart and Venus, all four of them are very badly, badly placed. You will find such people, but it's very rare, right? You, you won't find in any other, you know, any chart, random chart that you see, you will not find. You have to do a lot of research. And similarly, if you have a bad Venus in Navamsha and you have um, Aquarius or Scorpio Lagna, then there can be more trouble. Uh, but of course, there will be situations which will try to uh, help you also. So for example, you might have uh, certain bad placements in the D1, but your D9 may be relatively good, which means your D9 has a higher possibility to overcome uh, the karmic challenges that you have because of the D1, which, which does not mean that you change your karma, your destiny. No, it doesn't mean that. So it simply means that you have a higher potential to accept the prarabdha, which is coming from the D1, because the D1 shows the prarabdha and D9 shows how you accept your prarabdha. How do you take things in life? Can you digest things? Have you seen some people, they cannot digest something has happened in their life and then they've lost it completely. They cannot digest it. As they say, hajam, hajam nahi ho raha. Uh -huh. have you seen some people something good happens and you know they go to the air and then they're like bullying around others in Assamese they say uh, this this proverb they, they say no pua pua hoise. this means <laughs> a person uh, who never had anything has got something now and then this person is like losing his mind right oh I am the king of the world no pua pua so it's very funny, right, uh, that a bad Navamsha can hamper you when you get good things and as well as when you lose things in life. It, it, it's so surprising because sometimes I see people, they have a great D1 but a terrible D9 
and then I see okay the Lagna chart is indicating he will have a great period now oh yeah nice very good and this person will be very arrogant super ultra super duper arrogant why because the Navamsha does not keep the person grounded because that's that's inherently missing in the person to be grounded when things are good and the same person when something bad happens in their life they will start cursing god they will start cursing anybody and everybody around in this world that's what they will do that will be their full time business have you seen some people you just meet them and they are you know spilling out all the nonsense toxic poison oh usne aisa kar diya isne aisa kar diya he did like this she did like this Yes, I have. Oh, yes, I have. He's like that. She's like that. Government is bad. India is bad. America is bad. You know, whatever. BJP is bad. Congress is bad. Republicans are bad. Democrats are bad. This is bad. That is bad. You know, capitalists are bad. Communists are bad. Everybody is bad. God is terrible. The world is unfair. Have you seen such people? They're all over the place. <laughs> so, <clears throat> A good Navamsha gives you the power to accept things in life. It gives you the power to accept things which you cannot change, which is beyond your control. And to change things which are to some extent in your control. And it also gives you the power to know when to stop. So if, if people have a bad Navamsha, then what can happen is they will not know when to stop. They will just they will just think, oh, maybe I will make it one day. And then, then, then they may waste, waste 10 years of their life and then get into depression. But a person who has a good Navamsha will have that awareness. Oh, maybe this is not something which I should do. Maybe this is like I'm trying to be too much external. Okay. So therefore, if you see that there are multiple placements which are indicating that the Navamsha is difficult and adding to that your Lagna is Aquarius or Scorpio in the Navamsha, then it can mean sometimes that uh, you can have a difficult marriage because inherently you do not know how to be a good partner. It can be possible. But you also have to confirm that from the Lagna chart. Will that difficulty come and manifest? So, it's very weird and very surprising. Sometimes you see a terrible Navamsha and you see very good married life. And then you are like, oh, what the hell is going on? Astrology doesn't work. No, actually it works. What's happening is, this person has a very bad Navamsha, but the Lagna chart is good. So now what's happening is, <clears throat> somehow this person is inherently not a very good husband or wife. Terrible. But somehow, because the Lagna chart is not indicating difficulties in married life, so externally what will happen? Situations will be very favorable. Or they will have a partner who is like, uh, who will not leave them or, you know, they will somehow stay in the marriage. Okay, so then this person may feel, oh, my marriage is fine. Why do I need to be this nice person? You know, I'm fine the way I am, right? Yeah, so then, then what happens is you, you feel that, oh yes, I am this very good person. I am the best partner in this world. Nobody can have a better uh, partner than me. But if by the grace of God, there is one bad dasha which comes, because dashas will come from the lagna chart, then your marriage will collapse the, that, that very moment. Suppose your sixth house gets activated in the lagna chart. And you have a bad Navamsa. Adding to that, you have Aquarius or Scorpio Lagna in the Navamsa. Then things can be very tough. But again, you have to see how Venus is in D1, how 7th Lord is, 2nd Lord is, 11th Lord is. Because these four planets rule your married life. And we know the 10th house and the 6th house, because they are 12th to these houses, they are not supporting marriage they support independent behavior you know they can support coldness sometimes cold nature not wanting to be together with someone wanting to break partnerships and stay aloof this can be seen by sixth and tenth so if these houses also get activated and if you have a bad navamsha 
एंड एक्वेरियस और स्कॉर्पियो लगना देन इट कैन बी वेरी ट्रबल ओके सो देर फोर जस्ट इफ यू सी समबडी हैज हु हैज अ स्कॉर्पियो और एक्वेरियस नाम सब प्लीज डू नॉट टेल दैम दैट योर मैरिड लाइफ इज डिस इज ओवर बेटर यू शुड नॉट गेट मैरिड or you know maybe your marriage will end in a divorce never say that okay even if you are making predictions about somebody's marriage you should be very 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 careful and very sensitive in the name of speaking the truth do not do open heart surgery do not do that because lord krishna says in the gita na anudvegam karam vakyam sat he says this where he says you know that truth sometimes when people i, I see you know people say oh i speak the truth well it's very good that you speak the truth but you have to speak it in a way as krishna says which does not agitate the other person's mind so if you are speaking the truth in a way that is agitating the person's mind unless it is something very dangerous which the person is doing to harm himself then then maybe you can do open heart surgery but otherwise please do not please be uh, very considerate when you make predictions about somebody's married life if you see that this person will have a terrible marriage you might convey that but you you can say things like oh you have to be a bit realistic keep your expectations low focus on other things in life also along with your marriage right don't just say oh your marriage is over you'll be divorced you'll be kicked out by your spouse right don't say all this i mean you can say depending on the person's uh, level uh, of acceptance if the person is very stable and the person really wants to know that the marriage will work or not even and if they have seen you know that the marriage has been terrible then you may say my dear sir my dear madam maybe it's time for you to let go of this marriage but if a person who is you know 20 uh, or years old 18 years old then you tell them oh you 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 will you will have a divorce please do not do that okay even if you see that happening forget about aquarius or scorpio lagna even if you see that please do not tell them this thing at least not in their teens or in their 20s if they have come to you after 35 or 40 and you know they have try 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 it and they're tired of trying and nothing works out with anybody then maybe you can say that my dear sir my dear madam that is not there in your destiny somehow for this lifetime so maybe you have to remain single but you will do work in other areas you know maybe career social life or whatever spirituality but always be considerate All right thank you very much for your patience if you're new to the channel then please subscribe to it down below and if you want a consultation from me my website is down below god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will surely find him even if you have aquarius or capricorn or any lagna in your navamsha or any other divisional chart all right thank you very much